Hi guys, my name is Sylvie and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome to my channel and I hope you enjoy. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. So again, if you're new, you're not used to this. If you're back, then you're used to this and I apologize. So if you saw my last video, then you know that I just recently passed my CPL flight test. Big achievement for me. I've been waiting for this moment for super, super, super long um, and I'm really proud of myself. But with that, I figured that I would do a flight test guide type of video, um, just explaining to you what I did to pass all my tips and tricks, what the examiner said that she really, really, really enjoyed, um, things that I could have done different, but all that to say that I ended up passing with an overall mark of 95%. I will show you and hopefully you can uh, get some good advice from that because I will say I'm pretty proud of myself and I did a pretty damn good job <laughs> with it. So without further ado, I will show you. All right, so the first part of a flight test is obviously the ground brief. So for that, I'm gonna show you every single thing that I did for that. The first thing that I'm gonna show you with that is my POH and how I organized it. You can see already right off the bat that there's a lot of tabs. There's been a little bit of comments about that because some examiners are gonna want you to know how to use your POH and look um, at the beginning and find the section and then open it to that section and then find what you need from that. Whereas some examiners, um, will allow you to use the tab. So for me, um, I learned how to go through my table of contents and let's say I was looking for like general, then I would go to general. And then let's say I was looking for like fuel, then you would open to like section 1.3. So know how to do that for sure. I asked her what she prefers if she wants me to go through the table of contents or if I'm allowed to use this. And uh, she said that I prepared it really nicely and then I'm allowed to use this. So for example, she wanted to make sure it was okay. So she asked me, um, where can I find tire pressure, for example? So I go to my little tab that says tire pressure and I could just open it and find it there. And it was all ready. And as you can see um, throughout, I highlighted every single thing that's important that I may have needed. So everything is there. The thing about the POH, make sure that you know everything, um, <laughs> where it is and how to find it easily. Some things are kind of hidden and some things you don't think will be useful, but they'll pull out a question about it. So just make sure that you know all that stuff and don't be afraid to use it. If they ask you a question and you don't know, and it might be in the POH, open up your POH. All right, um, I actually just ended up taking a break because my friend called me because she's about to do her test soon. And so I was on the phone with her for an hour explaining exactly what I'm about to explain. So I guess it kind of helped. Um, so I think I just finished off with um, the POH and I think I just explained everything. Regarding this, I was asked about all the systems. I was asked uh, just where to find information and stuff like that. So I believe I said that earlier, but just know the ins and out of this and stuff like even where to find the service ceiling that's in the first page of the POH um, if it's a Cessna anyway Cessna 172 N model um, but yeah so know that <laughs> the next thing I'm going to talk about is the CFS so with the CFS um, what I did is I planned out every single airport along my route and also um, where the interceptions are and all the flight plan stuff. And they're gonna ask questions on where you can find certain things. So, you know, just know the ins and out of this as well. Um, and on the actual flight test, um, the lady really liked that I had all my tabs planned out. And when we did our diversion, um, I just asked her, can you please open at this page? I have a tab and she did it and she was very impressed. So. That was good. Here is my map with my cross country, uh, cross country, sorry. Um, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but basically what I like to do on my map is just make sure that I have this well written out for my diversion. And um, I have basically every information for my diversion written on here. This is the diversion that I did. Um, obviously that wasn't on my map. So everything that you're gonna see in red is my cross country. My green is my 10 degree drift lines and uh, I circled every obstacle along the way and I have every 10 nautical mile written out on it as well. Everything that's important, so all the airport information is all written in red. Um, and yeah, all my um, airports to divert to are all on there circled in green. So I have pretty much all of that on the map. And yeah, it was pretty good. Um, that's what my map looked like. I don't really know what else. 
to explain. Just make sure that you know um, every FSS to call along the way, stuff like that. They might ask you about that. The next thing, which is the big thing, is the cross-country plan. So I have every single thing in a binder and I have all my tabs on the side. So this is my en route information. Sorry, my hair is in the way. This is all of my en route information. So the time that I left at, uh, each leg, and obviously if you're a pilot, you're doing your CPL, which is probably why you're watching this, or PPL, um, then you most likely know all of this stuff with my pressure altitude at the bottom. One thing that was really important was this. So my, um, all the calculations and stuff that I did, I have every single thing down so that I was ready to explain how I got every piece of information possible, uh, including my pressure altitude, because for my altimeter setting, um, you don't have that in the TAF, so I had to use the isobars and use the, uh, the millibar thing and convert it into an altimeter setting. So that was pretty important. Um, everything that I have, crosswind chart, stuff like that. It's all down, so that was a good one. Um, then I have my weight and balance. So I have my weight and balance for all three legs uh, of my cross country. And what I did, let me pull out this sheet. So what I did for my second and third one is I wrote down, sorry, it's in French, um, everything. So for this one, I dropped off the examiner and 20 pounds of baggage and then how much fuel was left because that's how I calculated my fuel weight. And then on the third one, I uh, added fuel to finish off the leg and then I, um, I added on a couple. So I used the standard weights and I used the standard weights so that I wouldn't really get a question <laughs> about the standard weights. So following that, I had my takeoff distance. Um, again, I had it for all three of my legs and on every single one of them, I wrote the airport, I wrote the pressure altitude at the airport, I wrote the takeoff weight, and then in pink, I had uh, every measure that I used. So for this, you can see that I used the average between the two of these and the two of these, or sorry, just the two of these. Um, yeah, and then I have my final product at the bottom, and then on here, um, because of my headwind, so it was a seven knot headwind, so I took off 10%, um, obviously, because that's what you need to do for takeoff distance if you have a seven knot headwind or I think it's a nine knot headwind, but you know, and then I did that for all three of them. And then it's the same thing for my landing distance. So again, you can see that um, the pressure altitude for my second airport, which was Latuk, was between, it was like 500. So it was between sea level woo, and a thousand feet. So I did the average between these two and 18 knot headwind. So minus 20% to my landing distance. And I did that for all three of them. I forgot to mention for the weight and balance, I got a lot of questions about um, center of gravity and how from zero takeoff, uh, sorry, zero fuel weight to takeoff weight, um, how that changes my center of gravity and stuff like that. Then it's my uh, crosswind chart. So I color coded it for each airport um, and yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Icing chart, pretty self-explanatory. I just, since there's no forecast for it, I just use um, the METAR when we get closer to then with my METAR, um, so obviously to get all my um, crosswind chart data, I used the TAF from when I was taking off and I highlighted every single thing that I used that was pertinent. Um, there's more than just that. Obviously I have a couple sheets in here, so I think that's also pretty self-explanatory. For the FDs, same thing. So everything that I used is in pink. Um, I believe this one, both are in pink. So I did the average. Um, that's all written down on my calculations sheet. And to get all this data, I used the flight, uh, sorry, the route data tab on the AWWS website, by the way. So it's everything that's specified to my route, which is why I only have three of the FDs here because they're what I used. No TAMs, same principle. Um, I highlighted everything that was worthy and I have like a million sheets in here <laughs> with a lot of them highlighted. Um, I highlighted everything that was kind of like along the route. So if it wasn't just the airport that I was taking off or landing at, it was also my like diversion airports and stuff like that. And the last thing is the GFAs. So for the GFAs, I put little dots of what I needed. Um, I highlight, or sorry, of where I am. I highlighted everything that was uh, within that region and the data on my ISO bars because this is what I use to get my altimeter setting. And again, I have two because of my 
the timing. I left at 16 Zulu, so I had the 12 Zulu chart and the 18 Zulu chart. And for one of the for two of my altimeter settings, I did the average between 12 Zulu and 18 Zulu, so that it could be the 16 Zulu. So that was pretty elaborate i want to say <laughs> so i think that that about covers all of the ground portion of it um and it's actually getting pretty long so i think that i'm gonna make a second video later on about the flight portion um and this video will be just about how i did all of my ground stuff so with that said um i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it gave you enough detail if you have any questions um please just leave them down below i'll be happy to answer anything and look out for my flight portion of the exam video. I can't speak. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, please click on subscribe, especially if you wanna see that flight part of the video. This should be enough for all of your flight planning because uh, I just showed you pretty much everything. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.